Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast, a conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Well, greetings, uh, Effort of Community Church and those tuning you into the broadcast this week. Uh, great to have you spending a few minutes uh, with uh, Pastor Kevin and myself. My name's Wes, if you uh, don't know or don't recognize who I am, but it's just a joy to serve the Effort of Community Church, and we love you, we pray for you. And, uh, and as I said, we're excited uh, for all that God is doing. In fact, this morning we were in a meeting and just hearing God's stories of just the faithfulness of God, Kevin, yeah, and just sure. what God is continuing to do uh, through His power, through His Spirit here at Effort Community Church. And, uh, you know, we just came, we're in this, what is this week number two of the it Invisible Kingdoms, two, yes. I believe. <clears throat> and so if you've been just tuning in, maybe you just caught it for the first time this past weekend, I encourage you to go back and listen to the first message that Kevin had. Uh, but this week, Kevin was all bound up, right? You came on the platform all <laughs> chained up what was that all about <laughs> yeah well what's kind of funny uh, of course is that i'm i'm obviously in chains the yeah. whole thing was a bit of an illustration i'm obviously in chains and everybody saw it but i was still acting like it was completely normal yeah you were pretending like what's yeah, up like, what's what, why are you all looking at me like that and that was actually part of that illustration of simply yeah. saying like we can be bound up and we think everything is fine even though sometimes other people can see some bondage mm-hmm. in us that we're unaware of and uh, just having that place of, like even the, the restrictions, mm. I mean, honestly, till I was done with three services, my wrists were sore because I, wow. I had that a bit on too tight. Chains <laughs> okay. weighed about, uh, chains and locks weighed about 20 pounds. Oh, so wow. I could actually feel like when I took them off, like, man, I really feel yeah. much lighter. Yeah. Um, and all of, that's, all of that is an illustration of how we live with these weights mm. that we just flat out don't yeah. need to. And so even the idea of being restricted where I couldn't move my arms and couldn't walk well, mm. all that spe- speaks of how our lives are restricted because yeah. we're on a certain level of yeah. bondage. Yeah, well, and again, if you, hadn't, if you haven't viewed that message, I encourage you to go back and catch it because not only is the illustration powerful, Kevin, uh, there's great content um, because we wrestle and not against flesh and blood, yeah. as the scripture says, but yeah. against the principalities and powers of this dark world. And we're just asking the Holy Spirit to bring a heightened awareness to the invisible world around us, yes, right? That there that's right. is a, there, we're up against demonic forces because that's behind things, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And, yep. and I'd like to ask you, Kevin, and just to kind of reflect on kind of two, there may be a couple things, but uh, a couple things you said this weekend um, that I thought were pretty significant. One of them was, I heard you say uh, about we can be free, right? Like we can be totally free. And that, you know, sometimes in the Christian faith or in church, we hear this, or we get this idea that we think we can just manage sin, Mm. that with God's power, we just manage sin. But that's not the case, is it? Yep, that is not the case. And oftentimes what people do, I've heard two things actually come through the body of mm-hmm. Christ. One is, is that you will only like grow in the Lord with discipline. So the idea of being discipled. Ah. But the issue is you can't, actually this is a quote from Jack Hayford. Okay. Like you can't disciple a demon. You've oh, got to cast that's it good. out. Amen. That was yeah, one of the things. Like, right. so, so discipleship wow. is clearly like we need discipline, but we also need deliverance. And actually yeah. discipleship and growing the Lord is a combination yeah. of those two. So in other words, if I feel like I have some sort of demonic oppression, and I come to you, hey, would you pray yeah. for me and help me? But if I'm not actually willing to back that up with the discipline that oh, goes along boy. with it, so I want you to see that partnership of both the disciplines, the ways I need yeah. to act, think different, but at the same time, it's not just discipline, it's actually coming to a place of freedom. Well, that's, that, that, is, that is such a good word. And, you know, I think I could just even feel it in the congregation as you shared that message this weekend, that there's those uh, aha moments. In fact, I even talked to somebody after the service that said, you know, I grew up in this church and I heard all my life, like, you know, with God's help, you can manage it. Like you can deal with anything, right. but this idea and thought to that actually you can be free from it. Yep. You don't need to manage it. It's an amazing, amazing yep. gift. And and, it, and honestly, it's like I said, it's not one or the other. So right. sometimes people take an oversimplistic view. That's true. And they say, I'm going to go for prayer counseling and I'm just going to get free. Yeah. And then it's going to, but right. see, if you don't go in there with actually, then how do I, because we have yeah. patterns that we put in place while under right. bondage. And yeah. those patterns will be in place. And one of the things I didn't yeah. get a chance to talk about last this past weekend was uh, Matthew 12, hmm. a little bit more. So uh, again, he's using the illustration of a house. Yeah. And then he says, okay, when a demon is cast out, it goes to I was just thinking that scripture. Yep. And it comes back <laughs> yep. and then found, finds the house yep. swept in order. Clean. Swept. Yep. yep. Clean. And it comes back in. Yep. But not just the same strength, right? Yeah, exactly. So the, <laughs> so the problem is there... Um, 
whatever place of access that was yeah. available before is now still available. Oh, boy. So Whew. the thing was cast out, but the windows weren't locked. That's the doors right. weren't locked. The, the structures that were in place that gave access initially still remained in place. Mm. And then the second thing, you know, Jesus says, and the second condition is worse than yeah, the first. Yeah, boy. So, and here's just, wow. this is my opinion of, about how can the second condition be worse than the first? Um, it's because people haven't put the structure and management in place to actually stay free. Mm. Then when this demonic force comes back and, mm-hmm. and comes back and gains access, now they don't believe. Wow. So the first time they first time wow. they're in that place, like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to believe it. The next time when it's there, like, you know what? I tried it before. It didn't work. And so now wow. this, that's why, that's why I, just yeah. my opinion is that when he says the second condition is worse than yeah. the first is because the first time they had faith to be free. Boy. And now they come back and said, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't like this thing is sealed with a level of unbelief yeah. that you can't break through. Wow. Wow. That's, and, and we'll get to that. It's that's good theory, Kevin. That's good theory. <laughs> think it'll preach. I think there's some real good truth We'll be there. talking more yeah, about that. Yeah. Well, uh, so I appreciate you unpacking that a little bit more about that. You know, we can be totally free. Yeah. The, the other, one of the other things I heard this weekend, in fact, I've heard you say, telling us a staff and kind of prepping us for this too, and reminding us, encouraging it. But just as you're speaking into the messages and into this series, um, you, you at one point, even this weekend, you made a comment about discernment, like oh, one my. of the greatest yes. needs. How did you say that? The greatest? Yeah. I really do think the greatest need that we have as the church is to be able to, as a in, spirit in today. Yeah, today, yeah, in our, in our time. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not one of the glamour gifts. Mm. I'm not sure if we're allowed to use that <laughs> phrase. <laughs> no, I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Because glamour because, gifts could be like, well, like prophetic words and right. man, I got a word of knowledge. Right. Or look, I healed. healed. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yep. So that's probably inappropriate for me to call it a glamour yeah. gift, but I just it helps paint um, the picture. I'm doing that. I got gotcha. you. For the sake of like with you. these things are a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah, there's some show around that. Yeah. Or I don't know how. You, right. So discernment kind of lays there as yeah, it'd be nice to have. Yeah. <laughs> kind of gift, and we don't hide out a whole lot, man. I just think it's I think it's so much needed. Yeah. Um, the deception, you know, ninety eight. The the most dangerous lie is 98% true. Yeah. Wow. And I'll tell you what, like, I'm not going to go into specifics uh, about that, but as a pastor, you know, I hear what's mm-hmm. being spoken nationally. I see books that are being written about specific things. And I think I've actually come to the place of, wow, that's really a really good yeah. lie. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just deception is so yeah, so, um, so bathed in almost the, the complete truth, but it's not, it's yeah. incomplete. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so we did yeah. talk on Sunday. We talked about three things, which what I didn't have in the yeah. message notes because it kind of came to me a bit later in okay. the week uh, of of building yes. that discernment. Yep. One was ask for it. Yep. So, you know, First Corinthians fourteen, desire spiritual gifts yeah. like they're resonant. Ask God to manifest yeah. those gifts in you. Be careful what you are watching, what you're consuming yeah. in your heart, mind, and spirit. Yep. See, even if we are as Western thinkers, we're not aware of the spiritual dimension of what's going on around us. Mm. Then we think of, we don't think of, you know, it's just, do I like music or not like yeah. music? We don't think about, okay, what's the spirit behind that music? What's the spirit behind that television show? What's the spirit behind, um, you know, talk radio or certain kinds yeah, of news? Yeah, we don't think and that. So we just take yeah. it on face value when there's this whole yeah. thing that's behind it. And we've, so we've a spirit got behind to be, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've mm-hmm. got to be alert to what's behind yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And then, um, and we got to feed on the word. Yeah, amen. It becomes, it is, you know, initially, uh, the word was called the canon, mm-hmm. which is, it literally means measuring stick. Mm-hmm. Like it's the thing that everything comes up against yeah. and everything is measured against. So it's not the internet. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Yeah. Um, and so I, I feel like even when it comes to the supernatural aspect of the world around us, yeah. I think that we miss out on the supernatural aspect of the word of God. Boy, amen to that. And you know, Kevin, you're highlighting something that's really significant because as we're focusing on the invisible kingdom and as God is bringing um, not only revelation through that, but as you paused even this weekend around the sermon, mm-hmm. and not only do you encourage us like, hey, let's ask for the gift of discernment, yep. we actually paused on purpose mm-hmm. and you led us through a prayer yep. um, for discernment. And I, I, I'd like to go there as we end our time together yeah, because if you're, if you're if you're <clears throat> viewing here today and maybe you didn't, weren't able to see the service, but we would like to 
actually pause because I need prayer again. Yeah. Like I don't need, it's not just a one-time thing. It is something we constantly need to be seeking the Lord for. Yeah. And so as we Agreed. get to an end of today's podcast, I'd like to come back to that and actually have you close yeah. this up by inviting and praying for us, asking yeah. the Holy Spirit to give us that gift. Yeah, and actually I'll just remind uh, you for on behalf of all of us is that I don't want you to hear these things mm-hmm. or from me and Wes or whoever, Jimmy Nyman this coming weekend mm-hmm. as saying, hey, this is what you need to do. I'm right. saying like, I'm opening my heart before the Lord as well saying, okay, what what places yeah. of freedom yeah. do I need to grow in? Or what places of bondage do I need to leave behind? And, yeah. and so I'm just posturing myself before the Lord in that way. So I don't want you to think that, yeah. that this is for you and not for us. Like I'm asking the Lord, uh, in this season that we are in, as yeah. deception is rising, like I need to increase yeah. in my own um, uh, ability, spiritual gift of being able to discern and distinguish between yeah. spirits. Yeah. Hey, you know, Kevin, along that line, over the last couple, these last few weeks, as we jumped into the series, a proverb that's repeated a few times, I should count how often, but it keeps coming back to me, mm-hmm. is being wise in your own eyes, right? <laughs> and one of the things I've been that's thinking true. and asking the Holy yeah. Spirit for, just for myself, is, Lord, are, are there things in my life where I'm wise in my own eyes, yep. right? Yeah. And it become, it feels truth, but it's deceptive, yep. right? And so I don't want to be a man that's wise in my own eyes, so yep. I need the gift of discernment, and I need it as much as any anybody yeah. and so yeah that's 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 so so yeah. so good <laughs> hey well a couple of things i want to just mention to you and then we'll pray in conclusion yeah. one is i do want to remind everyone um romans chapter 8 verse 1 mm-hmm. um coming out of that romans 7 passage i'm not going to read that again yeah it's but good it's the idea of um i'm bound up paul you know it says wretched man that i am who will rescue me and that's what we feel like sometimes when we're in bondage we feel yeah. like wretched man what a wretched person that i am and one of the reasons why people don't open their heart before the Lord is they feel like he's going to condemn them. Listen, God never condemns you. Amen. There is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. And any condemnation that you feel does not come from God. It comes from the pit of hell. Amen. And you need to recognize that. So people keep their distance from God yeah. because they feel like God's going to condemn them. And so even like this past weekend, I said, well, to open your heart to an area that God wants to bring increased levels of healing and freedom. And there's many people saying, no, I'm afraid to do that. Yeah. Man, you do not need to be afraid. Condemnation yeah. does not come from God. Never, just yeah. don't accept that lie. Oh, that's such a, that's such a good word. And and again, if if I keep going back to the message notes from the weekend, which I have yeah. here in front of me, um, but there's so many scriptures that you listed too that help um, unpack uh, and remind us of who we actually are in Christ. Yep. Because we believe these lies, like, well, I'm not as good as Kevin, so you know, therefore God doesn't love me as much. <laughs> wow, what a lie! You yep. know, these little lies that we can easily believe yep. um, about ourselves and that self talk is really oh, yeah. important, right? Yep, that's and important. Uh, boy, as as the Holy Spirit illuminates even some of the self-talk, like these condemnations, that's usually where it happens. It's in our brain, it's mm-hmm. in our mind, it's in our heart where it's like, I'm not as good as, or, uh, you know, we, we pick this stuff up and we believe it. And yep. it's, it's it's chains, right? That's exactly it's right. It's chains. And so one of the chains you were unlocking was that in condemnation, mm-hmm. that spirit of condemnation. Yep. Um, and really just kind of throw it free. down. It sets you free. Yeah, it sure it absolutely sets you free. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things coming up here, and then we, we want to pray for you. Mm-hmm. One is <clears throat> um, this weekend, Jimmy Nyman, who's pastor of Lifeway Church, is going to be with us. He's going to be giving us some tools. Yep. Uh, I think his message is called Prepared for Battle. So, okay, how do Sweet. we actually have the armor on and actually uh, go into that? Uh, coming back, I'll be back the next weekend. And um, as we've opened up our heart for freedom, I'm going to give you some keys to that. Jesus said, I will give you the mm-hmm. keys of the kingdom, whatever you bind and whatever you loose. That's what's going to happen. And so you mm-hmm. do have the keys for that. I would point out um, the first Tuesday of the month of May, we'll be having a first Tuesday event. That's going to be with Jake Kale, and it's going to be on this topic as well. And so we're just going to put it to practice in a, really in a corporate way. And so I'd ask you to consider setting that time aside. And, and as you well. even highlighted, I think, in the message, yeah, you did. In the message notes, you had yeah. Dig Deeper, Setting the Captives Free, is a book yep. that Jake just uh, recently yep. released, I think, uh, a couple of months ago. That's true. So. And you'll also yeah. notice there in the Dig Deeper part, yeah. uh, The Bondage Breaker yeah. by Neil Anderson, which is kind of a bit of a textbook. It is, um, it's an excellent resource. Yeah. We have some in the office that we just give out to people yeah. as a resource. It yeah. is excellent. So feel yeah. free to dig deep in that. If you're like me, even as I told my own story of freedom, I, like, I can process that stuff when I read. Right. And so that can be a helpful thing as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, fantastic. And on the heels of that, we have the Thriving in Marriage weekend with Jeff yeah. and Shanti um, coming up uh, May 7, 8, 9. 7, 8, 9. So we're really excited for that. So we yeah. have a lot of wonderful things God's doing in us and through us. And we just want to continue to encourage you. Would you open your heart along with us? Just open our hearts to the Lord and allow him to impart this gift of discernment. Because in this series, in the Invisible Kingdom, man, we need it. Yeah. We need. And in this day of age, we certainly need it. So I That's couldn't agree right. with you more, Kevin. Yep. Um, and it is our heart's cry. In fact, later today, we as a staff will be gathering for prayer uh, for the church family. And that's this is one of the things that we're going to continue to pray for, Absolutely. Uh, for this gift of discernment <laughs> for ourselves, as we've been talking about today, yep. but then for you. Yep. And you can ask for it too. And so we just want to invite you um, into that as yeah. well. Let's do that right now. Amen. <laughs> yeah, God, I just thank you that you are so good to us to, to give us those gifts. Yes. God. And Lord, as a congregation, we love them all. We want them all. Uh, we recognize that in our humanness that maybe we think some are a little bit more important than others. And so some of those most important gifts are oftentimes kind of left like the gift of hospitality. And yeah, we will. But this gift of discernment, I feel like you're highlighting among yeah. us as a way of saying, my goodness, as we navigate the times in which we live, we need discernment. Yeah. Yes, God. So we admit that that's the case. Yes. And even as we admit that, our need for that, God, it opens up the door for you to impart that to us. So for myself, mm -hmm. for Wes and myself, yeah. and for everyone who's yeah. listening, the prayer that we prayed this past weekend, yes, help us to build Jesus. that gift of discernment, release that in it, may it, us, may it manifest it in us. Mm -hmm. And I pray, Father, our desire is to cooperate with you in that process that we yes, would... God. Be careful of what we consume as well as we would dig into your word, feed on it like our life depends upon it because ultimately it really does. Mm. Thank you, Father. Protect us from deception Yes, as we walk in this season and again, dis, uh, 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 stirring up that gift of discernment among us in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Kevin, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you Thanks for, for helping unpack that. And thank you for encouraging us not just to be aware of this information, but actually to take a step. Yep. Right? Amen. And press yeah. in. And thanks so much, Wes, for your help today. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, absolutely. God bless you. And thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and of course, learn more about us by visiting effortofcommunitychurch.com.